I look like Hella from Thor? Don't you sometimes just want a club that Kevin Smith? Well, how about instead you join that Kevin Smith club? Oh my God, we've been having such a good time. We have hours of audio, kids, in the Smodcast podcast archives that you can stick into your ear holes and listen to. Or do you want to look at something? Are you one of them dirty cucks? Well, then go to the Smithsonian screening room where you can watch hundreds of hours of video of my entire career spanning from the beginning up till now, including my daily morning show, Wake and Bake, man, where we just smoke weed, hang out, and I tell you what I'm working on. Plus, there's exclusive events. We've had Clerks 3 screenings for our club members. We've had Smodcastle exclusive shows for our members back in Jersey. We do events all the time, including movies pop-ups. And there's tons of merchandise, of course, that that Kevin Smith Club members get exclusive access to before anybody else. There are so many ways into that Kevin Smith Club, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to come through the front door. You can come through the back door. We like it that way. Sign up as a clerk where you get access to all the audio that we got. Or join as a mall rep. That gives you all the audio and all the video as well. Or join as a fun employee, ladies and gentlemen. You'll get a new t-shirt, an exclusive That Kevin Smith Club t-shirt every quarter. Or join as a yoga hoser and get yourself something cool like a That Kevin Smith wake and bake bowl ladies and gentlemen those are our existing levels but what about the new levels that's right for 2022 we've added some levels including the fashionable mail you get everything that the clerk the mall rat the yoga hoser and the fun employee gets but you also get once a year an exclusive piece of wardrobe from a kevin smith film straight out the view of universe from the Secret Stash archives. Or join as a brand new Ranger Danger, man. That gives you everything that the clerk, the mall rat, the fun employee, and the yoga hoser gets, as well as what the fashionable male gets. But then you also, once a year, get an exclusive prop direct from one of my movies. And if you've got untold riches coming out of your ass, guess what? Holy cow, there's the golden calves level, man. For that level, you come to my house, I cook you dinner, we record a podcast, and we shoot it for Wake and Bake, and it goes up on Smodcast, man. Very exclusive. Once a year, we do that. Join us at thatkevinsmithclub.com. Be a clerk, be a mall rat, be a fun employee, be a yoga hoser, be a fashionable male, be a ranger danger, or be a golden calf, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be waking and baking for you. Come join me at That Kevin Smith Club. <laughs> Whoa, 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 <laughs> I'm hiding my coughs, can you tell? Whoa, <laughs> you're doing great. Hey, everybody, welcome to Fat Man Beyond, I'm Kevin Smith. I am Mark Bernardi. Hey! Hi. We're back, kids. We were at Comic-Con. It was a fucking blessing and a gift to be back after three years amongst our peoples. Um, what a wild, wonderful weekend. Thank you for tuning in to the streams that we did and uh, the live shows, uh, including, you know, the standard edition and then the ones that we did on Friday and Saturday. Thanks to Dave Desmalchin for coming by and hanging out and taking over with Mark. Thanks for Ryan Leibowitz for coming in and shit. Um, what a great fucking con, man. And uh, I saw Mark a bunch through it. Mm. Um, we did not see each other on Saturday for any of this post Marvel madness. So that's what today's show is about. Um, we covered a lot of con kids, but we did not get to talk about the most important aspect of con. And I say that as a guy who had a fucking movie there. <laughs> it was like clerks who three, what? Cause I was backstage at Marvel just, being a kid again uh, at the Hall H panel. My pa my panel was at Hall H right after theirs. So I was able to like go backstage and let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I saw all the fucking Marvel family, the entire Mary Mar Marvel Marching Society, Mark. I saw all the famous fucking people go through and shit. I saw the only fucking Kevin that matters, Kevin Feige, man. 
Did you say hi? I didn't. I'm like, you know, I was there with, uh, like my wife was with me, my kid was with me, uh, Chelsea was there, Austin, Harley's boyfriend. And, you know, I kept like, Jen was, uh, she joined uh, later on, but I was next to Harley the whole time. So I kept saying to Harley, that's that person, that's that person. Or she would be like, <gasps> like she's a big James Gunn fan. She loves fucking those Scooby-Doo movies. So aside from everything else, she sees him as the Scooby-Doo subscriber. <laughs> So when he came in, she was like, oh my fucking God. And she's like, go say hi. And I was like, nah, this dude right now is like getting up there and he's gonna give the world the first fucking taste of Guardians of the Galaxy. I got my, I can hit him up on text anytime. Last thing he needs is one more fucking face or body coming in to be like, hey man, unrelated to all of this shit whatsoever. I'm a professional, Mark. I know what it's like backstage. <laughs> give a fuck. If I was backstage and Tom Cruise is like, I want to come over and say hi. I'd be like, hey, hey, why don't you jump out of a rocket or some such shit? I'm in pre-game right now. I wouldn't. Actually, I'd be like, Tom Cruise, let's take a selfie. That's good for me. Um, so I, but I didn't bother anybody. I, I, I didn't go over and say hi as much as I wanted to and shit. And even afterwards, they're coming off the panel with like a fucking adrenaline rush and shit. But I did see some really sweet uh, moments. Um, including the fact that right before the Guardians kids all went out, they showed the trailer, I think. And they were like as a family unit backstage. And it wasn't like a show. It wasn't for the benefit of anybody backstage. Backstage is there's very few. There's a place to take pictures, but there's no cameras or anything. So it was very authentic and they were just like arms around each other watching this thing and they fucking cried as well. It was a really Aww. beautiful like moment where you saw the family dynamic at work. So it was nice being a fly on the wall for that. Not to mention like the entire uh, Black Panther panel. Like, you know, you can't hide that many people uh, backstage. So when I was backstage, I was seeing everything and whatnot um yeah man it was it was that was the highlight of the con for me and, and again i had a fucking fantastic panel after them in hall h with my own shit showed the first five minutes of clerks three everything went great but you know i generally i go to that for business right like i like mm -hmm. the world that we're in but it's pretty much like what i do for a living and last five years i was on the imd boat interviewing people and shit like that so you know, being able to be backstage and be there for a moment of pure fandom, my fandom, not like just theirs. It was nice to see everyone receiving them so well, and I'm happy for them, but I was serviced. Like, I felt like a fucking fan. And I'm in the business of, like, f fan service, pleasing fans. That's what I fucking do. And I felt serviced back backstage, like, sitting there watching that that panel that, that you know it was that was my happy place i got so emotional so many times because i was like i fucking love this shit uh me and the kid were just like ah! during the fucking guardians trailer and the wakanda trailer just fucking copious tears the uh ant-man trailer was great but so loud mm. um <laughs> the theater was fucking thunderous so you couldn't hear some of the dialogue um I, you know what we'll get into all that shit uh how was your rest of the con um when i when i left you on saturday at 4 30 you were but um, a learner now you are the master now i'm the master show enough <clears throat> um yeah finished the podcast with dave dismalchin who's remains one of my favorite people what a fucking um, what a great guy what a pure soul absolutely like he just he he nailed it he killed it he, uh, he did, however, um, make me talk about Zack Snyder, which I was trying not to do. But he was like, hey, so what do you make of this whole Zack Snyder business and the bots and the, 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 the Zack Snyder cut? And I was like, oh, you were talking about this? He's like, yeah, what, you, what did you think about it? I walk away for five fucking minutes. Yes. You get yourself in Snyder trouble? He, he, he took over the wheel and steered the bus right into a flame war. Um, did you get in we, trouble? We, did, you feel any, did you feel any heat? 
I felt no heat. We navigated it about as well as I think was possible to navigate that, um, which ultimately is not by saying anything. <laughs> um, and then the rest of my the rest of my con the rest of that night was was just going out to a, a lovely dinner with, with a bunch of friends, um, and then hitting the EW party where I saw the best thing that I saw all weekend. Is this, I saw your um, tweet thread. Tell this story. It's really awesome. Really, really. Important. Yeah. No, it's, it's, so I'm at this party. The, the Entertainment Weekly Party is the last official party of the convention. And it's always the big climactic thing. It's the hardest party to get into. Hard even for me. And I worked at Entertainment Weekly for 13 years and I started that party. And it's hard for me to get into. <laughs> it's still, you have a hard time getting in? <laughs> I still have hard, because nobody remembers that. I'm just the old man on the hill. Been like, this is my party. I never go, uh, hey, I'm not a party guy, but my kid like is always like, ooh, can we go to the entertainment weekly party? I was like, you could try, but I'm not going over there and being fucking shown the door. Like, <laughs> you don't want to be, I mean, she don't really want to be associated with Silent Bob anyway. Like, you know, she happy she might, I'm her dad, but like Silent Bob would also a little cringe for her and shit. She don't want to yeah. go to no fucking shindig with me ever but she was willing to go to fucking like ew if i could get her in she's willing to sidle up that <laughs> old fucking silent bob but <laughs> I was like i don't even think i can get into that shit man they they, they wait for the famous people there so how yeah, so you got in thank god i got in and uh and so the thing that i saw was just two people who met each other and the two people are aldous hodge who was there as a member of the Black Adam cast. He's playing Hawkman. He's Hawkman. Um, he plays Hawkman. He, he's also actor. like- He's been in many things, but he's forthcoming mm -hmm. Hawkman, but a wonderful actor. Very good. I mean, I, I, I first found him in Leverage, um, you know, back in the day on TNT. Jay, he, Jay loves that show. Huge Leverage. Oh, it's so much fun. I was a big, I was a massive Leverage fan. And then, you know, he's, his career has very steadily began to grow and grow and grow. And the, the last time I saw him on the screen was The Invisible Man. He played a, a cop in The Invisible Man. He was on City on a Hill with Kevin Bacon on Showtime. Like, he's blowing up. All, he's in a constant state of blowing up. Um, and the reason why he was, the other thing that he had at Comic-Con was he is playing Jon Stewart, Green Lantern Jon Stewart, in a new Green Lantern animated movie. <coughs> And, and, you know, the other thing to know about Alice is that he is incredibly handsome and incredibly cool. Like, there's- Good looking man, very good looking man. Very good looking guy. And, 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 the, and his like, a very, like, uh, if we were in high school, what I would have called one of the cool kids. Absolutely. He would have been like the guy who is the, like the quarterback on the football team and is also gonna play Lear on the high school production of King Lear. And it's also in like the art club, like he could do no wrong in any of those things because he could he's do one of, He's one of the give up guys. When you see him, you're like, I should just give up because <laughs> <laughs> Look, they got it all. I got one you're thing going for me. They got it all. You're just not fair. And <laughs> so he's just like in this party, just kind of hanging out and chilling. And uh, and somebody turns to him and is like, hey, man, we, we should get a picture of you guys. And the other guy in this picture is Phil Lamar. Now, Phil Lamar, in case you're not familiar with Phil Lamar, um, it, it's, it's hard to run down the list of his bona fides, but um, you might know him as Marvin from Pulp Fiction, who gets shot in the face. You might know him from Mad TV. You might know him from, you know, any number of like voice roles like Samurai Jack and Avatar. And yes, Kevin. I, I, I know I made a prompt. People keep pointing out to me in chat that I made a fucking New Year's promise to not interrupt your story. Um, <laughs> But, but Phil goes, Phil and I go back, he was a voice on the clerk's fucking cartoon. <laughs> and he's also the voice of hero for us in Masters of the Universe. Indeed. Shutting up. Um, but he, he is probably, of, of the many things he's, he's known for, two of them that are, that are at the top list of that, top or upper echelon of, the, of that list, or he was the voice of Static on the Static Shark cartoon. In the, in the mid 90s on the WB. And he was also the voice of Jon Stewart, Green Lantern in Justice League and Justice League International, two animated shows. Um, and so the person was like, we should get a picture of you two. And Phil is like, yeah, I mean, sure, I guess. Cause Phil, I don't know if Phil understands 
entirely how much he's beloved in the world and his and the 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 part of the firmament he is within not just Hollywood but geek Hollywood. Um, I don't know if he understands that he is one of the titans that he he walks among us and yes, sir. I don't want to interrupt, Mark, because I made a New Year's resolution about not interrupting. <laughs> However, I also uh, wouldn't want Phil to see this and see me standing by like a cuck saying nothing, just watching you do oral on him. I co-sign everything uh, Mark is saying, and I agree. I don't think Phil understands, A, how fucking famous he is, and B, how beloved he is. Absolutely. And so, so Phil is like, yeah, I guess I'll take the picture, whatever. And Aldous turns and his face goes from like Billy D. Williams cool to seven year old kid who got cake. Like he just loses his fucking mind. He's like, oh, like the smile and his eyes are wide. He's like, do you know what this is? This is, this is my John Stewart. This is the John Stewart that I watched when I was a kid. And now I'm playing fucking John Stewart. We got to get a picture. And, and then it becomes like Aldous is like draping himself on Phil and Phil, because Phil is a like card carrying nerd, has a Green Lantern ring with him. So Aldous is trying to understand when you try on the ring, I'm going to try on the ring. I'm going to shed away. And by, by, you know, by darkest day and blackest night, like they're doing the oath, like it's the most adorable thing I've ever seen. And, and you know, I, I mentioned this on, on Twitter and people keep talking about how representation matters. How the fact that you had, you know, Phil Lamar playing a black Green Lantern was the Green Lantern for a generation of kids, white, black, brown, yellow, whatever you want to have it. Um, and it definitely means something to Aldous, clearly, to be picking up the mantle from Phil. But even more than that, for me, it was just everybody's a fan. Like everybody's got a thing that they've loved, a thing they've loved since they were a kid. And to be able to work in a space where you get to be part of that fabric, part of that story that you're passing down from generation to generation, and then to be able to meet the guy you were a fan of, hoping that kids will be a fan of you. Like it's, it was this perfect, just seamless meshing of all of the things that make Comic-Con special. You know, being able to meet your heroes, being able to be part of a lineage, being able to be in a place where everybody's there because they love something. And these two guys who didn't know they were gonna meet at the top of the night, finding each other in a sea of people that is the EW party and having this brief moment of just pure wonder and joy um, was the most adorable thing that I saw. And it made my show, honestly. That's adorable, man. That's awesome. Um, it was so great. I saw uh, Deacon, our good friend, Brett Deacon, who always uh, provides us with uh, 40X and Screen X tickets when we do this at the Scum and Villainy Cantina. Um, you know, he invites us to come see screenings and he invited us to see Thor, Love mm -hmm. and Thunder. And I went with my kid and Phil was there with his kid. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, he's he's a, he's absolute magic and such a sweet guy. Every time I see him, he's always like, Kevin, Phil! <laughs> I just remember he did a voice in the Clerks cartoon where he did a child and it was so fucking convincing. And he's talking about Jay the character of Jay and why he's able to play on the little league team. And Phil goes, he got left back a lot. <laughs> and then I was like, that's Samurai Jack. Like very, very gifted. Um, what a magical Absolutely. con moment that you had, man. That's very much so. That's kind of that's shit that happens at comic con kids. Just it's, it's why we're so happy to be back, man. Like it's just being in that space, being with those people and, I, I will happily go to a con and do whatever they tell me I need to do. I got a I got a test. I got a vax. I got to have proof of it. I got to wear a mask. Happy to do all of it. But just to get all that again, you know, and feel safe about it, hundred percent. I'd I'd be more strict if I had to be. Also, I hate to rub it in because I know the rest of the country, you know, maybe didn't go to Comic Con and <laughs> had to deal with fucking sweltering heat as well, which was all over the news, but. What a lovely San Diego it was, temperature wise. <laughs> like I was wearing that fucking long coat the whole time. So, you know, I was trying to stay on brand. I'm selling a picture, kids. So Silent Bob's in full display. Fuck the purple coat. Here comes the fucking Silent Bob coat so that you're sitting there going, oh, yeah, Clark's three. I better buy my tickets, save this motherfucker's career. So I was so appreciative 
that it wasn't fucking hot, man. Like it was pretty <laughs> temperate down there. In in addition to the only thing that was really hot, Mark, was all the Marvel action at Hall H. Yeah, man. We we had some theories going into it. You know, we're like, well, what are we gonna see? So like, oh, I'm sure we're gonna see. You know, if I had to guess, which we did, I'm so we were gonna see a Black Panther two trailer. We knew that was gonna come. I'm tired of the internet. Believe in the internet. Internet told me right before that, like, oh, Marvel's not gonna show much because they got D twenty three coming up, so they're gonna save everything for that. Internet was wrong. Internet said I'm an idiot, Mark. So maybe they're wrong about that as well. Um, they they can't be trusted. Yeah, I, I'm I'm starting to rethink everything. Why do I believe everything I read on the internet? Internet told me Henry Cavill was coming to fucking Comic Con. No, he did not. That did, did not, not fucking happen in the least and shit. So I'm tired of the internet. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, whatever the fuck. But <laughs> man, oh man, it was uh, a con to remember. Uh, kids, we got no sponsor tonight. So I'm going to use this precious real estate to sell some of my shit. Uh, not only, of course, am I wearing a sweet Roosevelt uh, button down that we debuted at Comic-Con. All the staff at the movies pop-up was wearing. Big thanks to Tin Roof Inn. They were our home all weekend cosplaying as the movies pop-up. We sold so much fucking food and booze. Let me tell you something about Comic-Con people. They like to drink, Mark. They do. We, we encountered that once or twice <laughs> doing a podcast. Chow down and they fucking drink. Yeah, we were able to do live shows at night and they were serving food and booze throughout it. So Tin Roof, uh, many, many thanks. Uh, thank you to the good folks at the Roosevelt's. You can get this on their website. They got other things as well. Spirit Jersey made cool shirts that we were selling there. We did a lot of business at the pop-up in terms of merch. Thank you for everybody that came out. Uh, if you're like, man, I didn't get to go to Comic-Con and shit. Well, I'm on the road, kids. This weekend, I'm at GalaxyCon, me and Jay and the Clerks kids, fucking Brian, Jeff, Trevor, uh, right there in uh, the, the Carolina, the Northern Carolina, uh, Raleigh, you know, like fucking the Durham Bulls, man. Mm. Remember that movie? I do. Um, so come on out. You can get tickets at csmod.com. And then a few days after that is my uh, 52nd birthday, Mark. Um, mm. on, on August 2nd, me and Jay are going to be back east. So we're doing an event at Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash where we take pictures with everybody during the day. And then at night, we do a Jay and Silent Bob Get Old episode. Concept of the birthday event this year is called 100 Years of Jay and Silent Bob, which is confusing to some. Let me sum up the thesis. Jay turned 48 in June. I turned 52 in August, on August 2nd. 100 Years of Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, get tickets, come on out. See the Get Old show because... We showed the first five minutes of Clerks 3 in Hall H, played like fucking a charm. I would not be surprised if fucking we played that at the James Island Bob Get Old Show, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do that at the Atlantic Movie House. Um, mm -hmm. which, uh, I am, uh, I used to go to as a kid. So in any event, August 2nd, tickets at csmod.com if you want to come out for me and Jay's birthday, technically my Jay's birthday, but my birthday, Jay's <laughs> celebrating it because he was in June. Jay and Silent Bob, 100 years of Jay and Silent Bob. Tickets at csmod.com or GalaxyCon. Tickets also at csmod.com. All right. You got anything you want to pump? No. Pump, pump, pump it up. Pump it up. Pump, 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 pump it up. You want to um, pump. You are. Uh, let's dive in then. Kids, on Saturday, uh, Marvel had their panel, first time in three years. Last time they were there, I think, wasn't that when they were like, they gave Jane Foster the fucking hammer and shit? Mm-hmm. They were pushing Love and Thunder and... Uh, and they announced, they ended with announcing Blade. Right. Yeah, when Herschel comes out wearing the hat. So this year was their first year back in three years, and they did not fucking disappoint by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, some people suggested that they would show a few things and then keep everything good for D23. I mean, I don't know what they're keeping for D23 because I feel like they showed us an awful lot. We'll get into the trailers, <clears throat> but let's talk about the phases. They announced all of phase five. And then just for shits and fucking giggles, Kevin Feige told us what the first film of phase six was going to be. 
which is the Fantastic Four. And then he revealed yes. the fucking final two phases, a uh, final two films of phase six, which are Avengers movies. Mm -hmm. One of them is called, they're both coming out in the same fucking year. Avengers, yeah. the Kang Dynasty. And then the second one is Avengers colon Secret Wars. On November 7th of 2025. A reason to stay the fuck alive. <laughs> I'm hiking Runyon Canyon every fucking day because now there's a goddamn reason to live, Mark. Uh, they just announced today that the Kang Dynasty is going to be directed by the guy who directed Shang-Chi, correct? Right. Destin Daniel Critton. Congratulations then. Shang-Chi is a wonderful flick. I'm sure he'll do great with Kang Dynasty. They have not announced the Secret Wars director, have they? Or director? They have not. And we or know director. for a fact that the Russos have been saying like, oh, we'd come back for that. What do you think the chances are that we're getting another Russo Brothers Marvel movie? I mean, I, I, I'd never count out Marvel. I never think that it's impossible. Um, it depends if they can take time away from building a gray man universe, um, which apparently they are, sequels and spinoffs and the like. The Netflix um, come back film, in. The Gray Man, that the Russo brothers directed from their uh, came from their Agbo Agbo production company. Um, I guess was fucking huge. It's number one movie on Netflix, but that goes without saying. But they announced today that they're they're definitely doing a sequel. The idea was always this would kick open a franchise. So for them right. to be like, we're doing it again with some of the most expensive fucking people in the business means that it must. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it's 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 always hard to tell what well means for Netflix, but well enough that they want to do it again and they want to spin off characters and, you know, who knows what those spinoffs look like. If there's a TV version, if there's just a straight up Netflix series version, if it's all going to be features, who knows? But they, they, they those Russo boys are going to be busy in the, in the gray world for a while. But you never know. And also, this is not till when is it? When, 2035? No, 2035. 2025? <laughs> I'd wait until then <laughs> if I had to. Thank God the gods of Marvel won't make us wait that long. 13 uh, years for another Avengers movie. I'm, I'm fucking, I, I look, I didn't even know we were ever promised another Avengers movie. So <laughs> I'm like, what? Fucking right on, man. I'll wait as long as it takes and it's not that long a wait. And they've also like told us the titles, none of this fucking shit. Like last time we were like, ooh, what are they gonna call it and shit? They dumped a yeah. lot of information. The fact that they told us when Fantastic Four is happening, that it is happening, was fucking that it is happening as well. Yeah. So do you yeah, have a graph up for phase five? Um, I have the names of everything in phase five, but I can right, easily pull up the release dates too. Let's look. Marvel phase five. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Beep, 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 beep. So, so weird. Yeah. I always interrupt Basically. when you're talking and, and then you didn't talk and I let the show go fucking quiet. See what happens? So phase five begins in February 2023 with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. All right, so hold on. February 2023 is July 2022. August, September, October, November, December, January, February. We're only seven fucking months from this. Yes, we are. That's it. Fucking then sweet. Secret Invasion on TV. What, what is step one? What's the first movie in, or first thing in phase five? Ant-Man and the Wasp. That's the beginning of phase, phase five. five. Right. The Kang phase. The Kang and he, phase. And I, I saw that trailer. So let's stop and talk about that real quick. We'll do them in, in order of how they're coming at us and shit. Uh, I was uh, backstage, of course, as previously mentioned, and will be mentioning for the rest of my fucking life. Um, <laughs> the trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Quantumania, was uh, insanely loudly received. Everyone was very excited in, in the hall. So it was tough to hear some of the dialogue uh, backstage. But we got a look at Bill Murray. Um, Doing what? I'm not sure. I don't know who he's playing. I don't think they said. But I was there and I was watching the trailer and I was like, did I just fucking see MODOK? And then they confirmed Peyton Reed right after the trailer was like, yeah, that was MODOK. 
like so You're fucking totally robots right. in there and they're not hiding it and he looked fucked up fucking good <laughs> not fucked up bad fucking good it was just like holy shit i just can't believe we're in that world man it's one thing that uh, Pat Oswald does a Modoc cartoon and shit. They're fucking bringing this Modoc into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, will wonders never cease? Um, but like the big fucking draw of the trailer was uh, the voiceover by Kang himself the whole time. Or, mm. you know, we met a, a variant of him. What was he called? The last one or something like that? He who remains. He who remains. Um, and in this trailer, I'm pretty sure this is not that guy. I'm pretty mm. sure this is the Kang that we're going to be with all throughout phase five. And there's a moment where like Scott, like, there's some really cute moments in, in the trailer. Like he wrote a book and shit like that uh, <laughs> about saving the world and whatnot. But when he sees, he's in a scene with Kang and he says something like, I'm an Avenger. And I, you know, I could have sworn that the next line would be like, and I'm a conqueror, you know, and then bang, but instead they, they did something even more fucking dark, man. He goes, I'm an Avenger. And he goes, you're an Avenger. And then he steps out of the shadows. Was Jonathan? Um, Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors steps out of the shadows. And you're like, is he going to have the fucking face paint? Is it the headgear? But it pretty much looks like he, he liked him. And he says, you're an Avenger. He goes, have I killed you yet? Fuck is something like that. Fucking like, mm. like really dark. Like <laughs> just like that's fucked up. So I feel like you know Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp, uh, wonderful family friendly films. It feels like some dire shit is going to happen in Quantum Mania. <laughs> it feels like the cutesy title does not belie the danger that is forthcoming. Um, yeah, it looked fucking pretty good. So that kicks off phase five in february yes february 17th 2023 then what's next in the phase five um secret invasion the saw, uh the nick fury tv that. show saw a trailer for that has that been released yet the trailer no the only uh, one they released was uh was was black panther and fuck you're gonna release one Jesus, release that. It was fucking epic and amazing. Uh, I saw, of course, everything. So I saw the trailer for um, Secret Invasion, and it was not what I thought it would be. Hmm. Uh, I thought it was going to be light. This is fucking like conspiracy theory time. Very, very driven, very espionage, almost like um, Captain America 2 has that kind of three days of the condor feel to it. Who is who? Who is, you know, fucking who can you trust kind of thing. Um, gripping. Not not the trailer I was expecting. And then, you know, in the trailer, of course, we get to see Sam Jackson. Uh, I, I don't know if they spoil it. We, we get to see Sam Jackson. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Lots of them as well. Um, so yeah, that so. was that was a gripping trailer and shit. And they showed the whole cast. Like at one point, you could see Amelia Clark. Is that her name from uh, Game mm -hmm. of Thrones? Um, and then Olivia, um, is that her name? Coleman. Coleman, yes. Um, and homeboy who, you know, played the scroll in Captain Marvel is like, good guy. Uh, ben, ben Mendelsohn. Oh, fucking, I love that guy. What a great actor. Um, <laughs> wonderful fucking trailer, man. Like, did not disappoint, made me fucking excited. Uh, I, you know, it's not like I, I like those Ant Man movies, but that's not one that I was like, I got a fucking. And by the end of that trailer, I was like, Jesus, man, that just jumped to the top of the fucking list. I was like, you made the list, fucker. I saw Peyton Reed backstage. I'm a kind of like a director nerd. So I was like, huh? um, <laughs> all right, so what's next? So Secret Invasion, then Guardians 3 in May. All right, let's stop. Talk about the Guardians trailer. Uh, hands down, the absolute fucking highlight of Comic-Con for me. And I say that as a guy who showed the first five minutes of his movie and it was insanely warmly received and, and welcomed. Um, they, it's scored to the Flaming Lip song, Do You Realize, which is a pretty emotional affair to begin with. Uh, since we know that this is the third and final outing for the Guardians, there's already motion there uh, packed in. Um, mm. his visuals continue to grow and stun, not like they needed to grow, but like he's doing shit here. He's not done before beautiful things, um, that match that music so well. Um, 
there's there's a sense of finality to it all. Um, I saw Adam fucking Warlock, who looked amazing. Uh, we saw, of course, all the Guardians. Uh, they tease a storyline involving the Gamora from the different timeline and Peter, mm -hmm. which looks like star-crossed, heartbreakingly good. Like she has a moment where he, you know, he talks about like who she was to him, who Gamora was. And she's just like, not cold or shitty, but she's just like, I'm, I'm not that person. And you're like, oh my God, but holy shit. The, the, one of the main storylines apparently is all about Rocket. And they include what looks like what could only be flashbacks to his origin, how mm -hmm. he became. And there's one fucking shot that w destroyed the room, destroyed me, my fucking kid who was right next to me. I talk about it on the panel, the Hall H panel, which is up on my YouTube channel right now. Um, it is heart fucking breaking shot of a scared rock first a hand is coming in at him and then they cut to him and he's kind of shrinking back with scared baby eyes bro i'm getting fucking emotional just thinking about it now oh my god it was so fucking beautiful it's only two minutes of what promises to be over a two-hour movie and all they needed was that one shot they could have just put up that those two fucking shots <laughs> put up the release date and would have fucking brought the the room uh to their feet it was uh Beautiful, simply fucking beautiful. And I know a couple of years ago, there was a minute where it looked like we might not have a James Gunn finale to the Guardians of the Galaxy. And thank God we did, because if this is what he's been saving, like, it's just be beautiful beyond words. Dude, I was bawling over a fucking talking raccoon. Like, <laughs> that's what a great storyteller can do, can make you care about one of the most ridiculous characters in the pantheon of 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 uh the marvel toy box and still my god it just ripped hearts out with that one shot alone Mo movie looks fucking phenomenal like just phenomenal so that is when that is may may 5th 2023 so we're in july so august september october november december january february march april 10 months away Fuck. Or not. Bam. Might as well have a fucking baby. Hey, Banff Man's here, everybody. Give it up for Banff Man. So some of us didn't get to go into the room, didn't see Guardians. What I really need to know is, was Baby Rocket cute enough to piss, piss off Joe Dante? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, I can't imagine. I can't, you know, I don't, I can't imagine anyone will be like, somebody stole this. It's just, you know, he's just a little raccoon. Okay, baby, good to know. <laughs> baby, baby Yoda or Grogu was like a m fucking marketing breakthrough. Like it just didn't, when we're like, we've seen everything Star Wars could do. They're like, you ain't seen little Star Wars. And then <laughs> I don't think we'll see his like again in this lifetime. Um, this was just, you know, he's adorable, but like he's a baby raccoon. What I see from that shot, though is like he's not a fucking talking space raccoon like, oh yeah I, I don't know i can't i don't I, I have no information to base that on other than the shot i saw but for the first time in my life because in the movies you know he talks about first off he doesn't know he's a raccoon and he doesn't you know fucking know about earth or he only knows about earth from quill but and again this is complete conjecture on my behalf some of the imagery made it seem like you know Maybe he's from Earth. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he also will never say that he's an actual raccoon. Maybe he's you don't know. Or, or he's just a species that happens to look like a raccoon. Could um, very well be. Could very well James, be. James Gunn on stage teed it up so nicely. I, I guess it was maybe he didn't tee it up. It was afterwards because we'd seen it. And he talked about something. I'm going to ruin it, but it's uh, not ruin it, but not get it as well as he did it. Um, he talked about like, He's, he was always fascinated with Rocket because he was like, I, th I think he would be the loneliest individual in the galaxy. And like, even now I'm getting like fucking choked up when he said it. His brother too was, uh, is Sean? Sean, yeah, Sean Gunn. 
that fucking guy who's so good at the end of fucking Guardians 2 when the Ravagers funeral shows up and he's like, yeah, one of my favorite moments in movie history, one of my favorite performances and shit. He got, he was on stage, everybody gets a moment to talk. And he said this really fucking sweet thing about working with his brother and he got choked up and emotional, man. Like, oh, it was great. Was, you could tell they all fucking love each other, those kids, man. They created a family. I was texting with James Gunn. He texted me before to be, because I keep saying some shit about the trailer online, good shit. And he was like, you are too kind and stuff. And that is one of the things I love about this, my job is that you can fucking, interact with people who make the shit that you love and like fucking tell them like oh my god like i want weeds deep on that fucking trailer from memory for heaven's sakes <laughs> so that was magical uh that trailer absolutely was the highlight of comic-con for me i can't wait to see that all right what's next on the timeline um summer 23 brings us echo the spinoff from hawkeye i'm ready I'm ready to receive. Uh, you know, they set her up in uh, uh, Hawkeye, as you said. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, David Mack character. Kabuki That's right. David Mack, he created her. They, she was created in the run right after my Daredevil run. Um, and it, we're getting, we knew we were getting Daredevil and Kingpin in that, but now we know that Daredevil's getting a whole ass fucking show. Mm -hmm. called born again we don't have details i wonder if it is about born we'll, again we'll get there um, we'll all get right there. So wait so back to the where were we on the timeline here echo summer 23 as is loki season two in summer 2023 loki season two is 22 when the fuck is wakanda forever wakanda forever is this november wakanda forever ends Phase four. That's the finale of phase four. We'll finish yes. up talking about that. All right, keep going with phase five since we're in it. Yeah, so Loki season two is summer 23. July 28th, 2023 is The Marvels. Which we got a taste of at the end of Ms. Marvel. I mean, Indeed. I'm sure everybody knows by now, but fucking Captain Marvel showed up at the end of the show. Um, so, yeah. I, I look forward to that because I love that fucking Ms. Marvel show. My God, it was so good. Yeah. So we'll get, it's the sort of triumvirate of Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel, and then Monica Rambeau, who we meet Fuck in, a, yeah. in, in WandaVision. Fuck yes. I think her character is called Spectrum um, in this iteration, but in the comics would eventually be one of the Captain Marvels. One of many Captain Marvels. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. What a world we live in. I, I look, I like this iteration of the Matrix. This is nice. Um, <laughs> what's after that, Mark? Uh, well, I'm, I'm less enthused with this version of the Matrix, but at least the, the pop culture is not bad. No, no, the movie's um, good. <laughs> yeah. uh, November 3rd, 2023 will bring Blade. So that is over a year from now. Yes. Have they started over shooting a year Blade? I think I think they might have just begun production. Can't wait. Do you think it's going to be R? Uh, you know they they have definitely been leading us to up to the the threshold of R-rated Marvel content, and so there's no reason to believe that it wouldn't be if they wanted it to be. It doesn't have to be, but it'd be great if it was. Oh my god! Um, can't wait for that. Then what? We didn't. We saw uh, no previews of that or anything. Obviously. Yeah, sometime in fall 23, we will get Ironheart. We um, saw our first fucking, we got our first look at Riri in the, uh, in the uh, Wakanda Forever trailer. Yep. She's Including the moment heart. she fucking forges out the Iron Heart. That was dope. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Brink? Do you think, how does she cross over? Do you think she gets there? Remember at the end of Black Panther, they were like, we're reaching out and doing programs in the United States. Do you think that's where she comes from, or is she meant to be Wakandan? You know, I don't. I don't know. I mean, the in the book, she's an American, but yeah, totally. But you know, in the movies, you know, they like to remix and stuff like that. Right. Um, it would. It would be. It would be lovely if she remained an American who gets welcomed into the bosom of Wakanda. When I watched the trailer, that was the vibe I got. I was like, oh shit, she's one of the people that they found 
by, by like reaching out to mm. the United States, like at the end of Black Panther, that'd be very cool. But there's what yeah. uh, we'll, we'll deal with the Black Panther trailer in a minute because we got a deep dive on that. That's how we'll end. What else is going on in this phase? Um, in winter 23, we'll get Agatha Coven of Chaos. Great title. I like Wonder that Vision. better than Agatha House of Harkness. I think Coven of Chaos is fun. Very multi multiverse of madness. Very much so. Um, then in spring of 2024, Daredevil Born Again. Which we you saw me jizz over before, but let's add to that conversation, Mark. How many episodes are we getting? Um, the last I saw, 18 episodes. What did we do to deserve this <laughs> blessing? Because I want to keep doing it again and again. 18 fucking episodes, and that's a whole ass. That's like, do you think they're doing that's like a regular TV series, bro? That's a regular TV show. It's not you think they're doing you know, half hours or 45 minutes or I I you know, who knows? You know, I, now, I feel like they're probably hour longs, but they can do whatever they want. Did they do a similar the storyline in season three of Daredevil, a kind of uh, a born again-ish kind of thing. Didn't they dismantle his life a little bit in season three? Maybe I'm They wrong. did. They did. I mean, not quite to the extent of the comics, but they, they definitely did lean back into the Catholic guilt of, of Matt Murdock. And, you know, there was a, there was a nun character who plays a, a big role in sort of rehabilitating him and putting him back on his feet. Sister um, yeah. So like, it's, it's, it's been, the, the well has been dipped into before, but I don't think the well is empty. And oh, it wasn't, was it Kingpin last time or no? He was kind of gone by that point, right? No, they brought him back in, I think. I think Kingpin takes took a back seat for season two. That's right. Um, being That's, in jail. He was in jail. And, right. And then he gets sprung. I remember the breakout and, episode where he's in talking about the Good Samaritan. Yeah. He's just like, I yeah. realized that I'm the fucking evil stranger and the fucking oh god that was so good um yeah. 18 episodes jesus <laughs> can't wait all right what's after that charlie cox coming back fucking uh not bears coming Mario back yo doing it fucking we might get a real born again man or close enough fuck we might may 3rd favorite. 2024 brings us captain america new world order and that's uh, uh, Sam Wilson's debut in Indeed, the uh, titular role uh, of Captain America. We know Indeed. much about that. Um, what we know is that it's uh, it was written at least in part by Malcolm Spellman, who was the head writer on the Falcon Winter Soldier TV show. And it's now being directed by Julius Ona, who did the Cloverfield Paradox. Um, but that's about it. We don't know anything beyond that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, in chat, they're telling me uh, it's the the ill intent. I am the ill intent. Mm. But Vincent Denav, that's what Kingpin. That was a fucking wicked scene. Look, that whole Daredevil series was fucking fantastic. Um, not to you know mention that fucking hallway fight sequence alone. That's fairly legendary. <laughs> Um, so Disney Plus, they got their work cut out for them making a, they got up there. There's a, there's a bar that they got to hit, but 18 episodes, fuck man. That gives you more than enough time to hit that fucking bar. And you got all the same players. You got those magical actors and shit. And Disney Plus has not let me down yet with any of these Marvel shows. I don't give a shit what anybody says. So <laughs> I'm, I'm locked and loaded, man. Did you see at the end of the fucking She-Hulk trailer? Fucking... The Billy Club shows up and they cut yep. the panning up and then they cut away. I was like, oh, backstage, I was screaming. Um, yeah, all right, what else? Forward to the, to the Law and Order She-Hulk crossover that they're yeah. setting up, oh, clearly. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, the last, my last chapter of Phase 5 is Thunderbolts on July 26, 2024. Um. I'm, look, I'm in. I look forward as fuck to that. But we did lose uh, General Ross, so I guess it's not. It's not named after him. No, they'll figure out a way to do it, I'm sure. They're very clever over there. Um, yep. All right, so that's all of Phase 5. Let's dip that's back all of phase, five. phase 4. Uh, hey, Armor Wars nowhere in there? 
Armor Wars was not dated, but the thing to remember is that when they put up the slide for phase six, there were a, bunch there's a lot of, of blank spaces on that Which thing. They only gave us three movies. Probably what's going to happen at D23 is they're going to fill in a lot of those slots. Right. So there's that stuff. And there's also the Disney has an investor call, I think, in November, where they also like to, to bring some dog and pony stuff out and about and to be like, hey, look, with the state of the union is great. By the way, here's another nine things you didn't know were coming. Um, so yeah, phase six will be filled out, it feels like, by the end of this year. When does She-Hulk happen? She-Hulk happens in like three weeks. <laughs> She-Hulk happens in like early August. So that's also phase four. That, so what's that's phase four? Phase four then. She Hulk and Wakanda Forever. She Hulk and Wakanda Forever are the the last two chapters of phase four. Um, yeah. I look. I enjoyed the fuck out of the She Hulk trailer. Some people gave me shit online for liking it, and it's like fuck you. I, it, look, I, I'm a comic book guy. When she turned and looked at the camera and broke the fourth wall and talked, I was like. That's John Byrne, man. Like fucking John Byrne, when he did his she Hulk run, stole that from Moonlighting, which was popular at the time. Mm -hmm. And fucking like was, a, you know, it was a hit in the books. It was part one of the funnest part of the books. And when they show it in the trailer, she looks kind of, you know, surprised by it. Like that she broke the fourth wall. And I know like, you know, Fleabag was a huge hit and she broke the fourth wall like all the time. But John Byrne and She-Hulk did it so many years ago. That did my heart good to see them honoring that part of the mythology. And I think the, the thing looks charming as fuck, man. Yeah, and I think the VFX are getting, you know, they're dialing yeah. them in. They're, they're getting stronger. Yeah. Um, that was why yeah. I heard we don't have a Guardians trailer release is because apparently there were unfinished shots. I personally didn't notice anything. Mm. But they they unfinished VFX is... I think why they haven't released it yet is what I read online. If I had to guess, and that's again, purely guess, if they're doing that D23 thing, they're probably going to show it then. And maybe that's when we get it. Maybe it comes right. out. Then. But there, I mean, when does the movie come out? They're so far off. It feels like guardians. That's next year. That's like next so year. They got a minute to get there. Yeah. Um, all I mean, right. They, hell, they, could, they could put that trailer in front of Black Panther 2 if they wanted to. What a great segue. Now let's talk about the epic that was the Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer. Uh, Ryan Coogler um, apparently uh, has lost nothing as a filmmaker, gained everything. <laughs> oh my God, this movie is fucking huge and looks beyond accomplished. Not only are we back to Wakanda, they're also introducing Namor and and the Atlanteans. Like, that's fucking crazy, man. There's a lot of movie there. And the movie that they're showing us in the trailer looks like it's setting up a war between Wakanda and Atlantis. Yeah. The guy who plays Namor. Kenok Hirta, I think, I believe his name is. Did you see the fucking wings on his feet, both as a baby and as a grown-ass man? Mm -hmm. Did you see that fucking screen-accurate outfit him he's wearing with the little <laughs> green trunks all of it was fucking perfect dude like the first mutant there he is um, i mean the, the thing that i that i came away with i mean i came away with so much but we often say and i've said more than once looking at these marvel movies well and while i do love them sometimes it feels as if nothing is really nothing has any weight to it right like especially when you get to the third act of some of these movies where it's just CG punching CG, you know, and they find a way to end the movie at ex kind of exactly the same place that they began the movie, these characters. Like Thor and Love and Thunder ends with Thor, just a happy dude. You know, like, I got this kid now, cool, that's fine. But it seems as if he was very much the same character as he started, as he ended. Um, there's not a lot of weight. There's not a lot of permanence for some of these movies. And then you get to, to Wakanda Forever, and it feels like it's nothing but consequence. It's nothing but here are things that have happened that are registering and, ca and carrying weight. You know, the entire first half of that trailer, it's permeated with this feeling of loss. You know, and it's, it, it, it's not as if we are going to pretend that, that just, we don't know where T'Challa is. We don't know what happened to him 
I'm like, no, we're we are 100 playing that T'Challa is now past, just as Chadwick <clears throat> is past, you know. And 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 it seems, and I'm reading between lines here, but it seems looking at at Shuri that there's a little bit of like there's a little bit of Superman there of I can do all of these things, but I couldn't save my dad. I couldn't save my brother. I can I can do all of the science. I can work wonders with with the magic that is Wakanda, but I couldn't, I couldn't save my brother. And so it just, it, there's this feeling of heartbreak, not just, oh, who's that guy? Come on in. Oh, so I was pointing to you. I wasn't saying get out. Special guest. Oh, hey. Brothers and all that, I had to come. We were know. talking about, did you see the Wakanda Forever trailer? Yeah. You were there backstage, right? Yes, with me. He was there with me too, watching backstage. Wasn't it dope? It was so good. I like the end now. It's just like snicked. You know, pulls out what, like wrong you know, movie, not wrong snake, movie. but yes, the claws come yeah, out. Claws Who come do you out. think that is? We're gonna get into that conversation Ooh. later, but who's wearing that suit? Wolverine. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, honestly. I wasn't sure. Were you there for all the trailers? You were there for the whole panel. Right? I wasn't there for the other trailers. I came right at the end, of, right? You saw that? that? Yeah, they showed it twice in a row. I mean, yeah, it's it, and they kept playing. Yeah, it was, it was the, the feeling there was great because. You could see the emotion on the cast and stuff. It was pretty amazing. There it is right there. There's the Oh yeah. And then I wake up. Um the uh the boy here who is a 48-year-old man, I think. 48 now? Yes. Yes, yes. Because 100 years of Jane Zon Bob on August 2nd. Uh was on the Clerks 3 panel with me after the Marvel panel and did a very like funny, it wasn't even a bit. It was just like purely authentic where he was talking about um, you know, he's like, we got our hands and footprint in the cement of the Chinese theater, like back in 2019. He was like, now I want to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And then the third is a wax figure. <laughs> and I was like, a wax fucking figure? Who told you that was the fucking pinnacle? And he was like, I went to Danny Trejo's wax figure ceremony, and he was next to Obama and the Golden Girls, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> when you know you've made it right when you're next to the golden girls and obama and area ariana grande too oh shit you left her off the list so that's what he's he's doing working hard to become a wax figure anyone out there these are my things wax star fortnite skins fortnite (laughs) skins so listen if madam to solid herself if you're out there listening Here's a guy who definitely wants to be a human candle. He wants to be made of wax. House of wax right there. Oh, look at this. We have another special character. Another special guest. Come on over and say hi. This is the young Logan Muse. Named for Wolverine Weapon X. (laughs) They just went swimming, man. Yeah, we just went swimming. She's hungry, so we're going to go. But thank you, guys. Have a great day. Hi, Jay. Hi, little Bye, pink guys. sugar. Hi. You know where Aunt Jen is? Jen is in the room. If you go knock on her door, she'll come out and give you a hug. Bye. Bye, kiddo. Bye. So cute. Adorbs. And um, she's adorable, too. Matt, and right there, like, fucking, that little image that you saw, that little slice of fucking Americana, whatever you call it, family. <laughs> Brought to you by the fact that that dude was able to get over his demons over 10 years ago. There was a time where we didn't know what, you know, fucking Jay's future was. That dude's a walking fucking billboard for being able to turn shit around, man. Like, and one of the best dads, The uh, fuck that. Honestly, the best dad I've ever encountered in my entire life. Made me, like, you know, by the time he had his kid, my kid was already grown up, grown up and shit. Seeing him with his kid made me go like, fuck, like I should have been that kind of dad. Like, he's absolutely <laughs> fucking wonderful with her and stuff. But it's a, there's a lesson here, kids. If you're fighting something, he used to fight fucking, you know, addictions and shit. You, there's a chance you work hard, you can put it behind you and fucking, he's joyful. The dude, all he ever wanted in life was to have a family. You know, he didn't really... Never knew who his dad was. His mom was in and out of jail. He longed for stability as a kid. You know, good news is it created a, a wonderful sense of humor, fucking big hearted guy, but he had a hard life growing up and shit. And he always wanted like a family of his own. That's why he clung to mine 
early on and shit, like some sense of stability, normalcy. That kid is his entire fucking world. Like it's beautiful to watch. They're they're besties. They fucking hang out and shit like that. It's cute. Mm. Anyway, back to fucking Marvel. Anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, it just there's 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 a very tangible sense of loss in the beginning of that trailer, and then the idea that loss doesn't wait. You know, you, you the, the real world will intrude when it decides to intrude, and so Queen Ramonda, who is like. 100% still grieving the loss of her son, still has to lead Wakanda against the fight of its life, which seems to be, you know, an invasion from beneath the ocean, from a, from a tectonic event happening off the African coast as we were teed up in uh, Avengers uh, Infinity War. Um, I mean, I, it, and it just looks big and it looks real. You know, like we, we've seen so many just VFX fantasias that feel like they're just made of candy corn. And like when you see the shot of a, a whale from underneath and guys are holding onto it, like this is the trailer that that Avatar movie wanted to be. Like this is the one that's evocative and, and has nothing but, you know, it's, it's teasing, it's promising more than it's just showing. Um, and I just, and, and the music kind of broke me. You know, it's like no woman, no cry. <laughs> into into Kendrick, into everything is going to be all right. It's just my God. the The use of no woman, no cry. I saw some people being like, "Why would they use this?" I'm like, "What are you fucking crazy?" Like that's what the song's about. It's about female strength. That's the thing that blew me away about the the entire trailer and the story that seems to be shaping up is how insanely female forward the whole thing is when you remove t'challa as he's been removed in the storyline you're left with it like a kingdom full of women and i think i think you know whatever black panther made i think this makes as much if not even a little more because at the end of the day like i'm, I'm i don't want this to be politicized or whatever but like is a movie for everybody, but oh my God, women are going to love this movie. Mm -hmm. it, probably even more so than they loved Black Panther, I, I, is my guess. Like it just, my kid and my daughter responded to it in a way that like, I respond to this stuff. Like my wife weeps watching that trailer. We watched it backstage and they ran it twice, the Black Panther trailer, the Wakanda Forever trailer. Um, then we watched it last night here on a big TV, watched it a few fucking times, the trailer itself, then went back and watched sections, then went back and watched it with the fucking closed captioning on, then went and watched one of those videos where somebody breaks it down and shit like that. And my wife's bawling the whole time. I'm telling you, man, this movie is something special. Um, and it's, it's going to connect with anyone who's suffered loss and we all have everybody fucking suffers loss and stuff uh, mm -hmm. it, it was profound it was big it made me feel small as a filmmaker but i always do but man oh man i was just like look at this like faced with you know the unenviable heartbreaking task of trying to continue telling that story without chadwick um ryan coogler based on that trailer alone may have fucking taken us in a direction perhaps we weren't necessarily going to go and it looks fantastic yeah i mean i i remain i remain of the opinion that t'challa deserves to be a character that persists in the marvel universe because i do think that it's important for young black kids or young kids in general to have a t'challa in their lives and so for that character to just vanish completely, you know, I'm not gonna say it's a disservice, but would be a shame. Um, but I also understood completely the, the desire on Ryan Coogler's part, on Kevin Feige's part, on the entire filmmaking squad's part to not rush to that. That they've, they wanted to have the moment to grieve and to let us all grieve the loss of this man. And it feels very much as if this is a movie that's leading us in a sort of spiritual journey of understanding and processing and coming to terms with finally cinematically 
the loss of Chadwick Boseman. Like there will probably be some point down the line where, I mean, we are living in the multiverse of, multiversal saga. There's going to be a Secret Wars movie where there is a T'Challa from another dimension, from another multiverse, from another earth who crashes into the story played by a different actor. You know, that's, that, that's what a multiverse gives you the opportunity to have. But to take a movie to say goodbye to that guy, like it's, it's a profound statement. Class beyond class. And also I'm telling you, they're going to be rewarded for it. Like, I don't know what he had planned, obviously, uh, for a Black Panther sequel had Chadwick lived. But like, they did not shirk from, from a challenge and they may have made something incredibly special because of that loss. You're right. They may just be taking a whole entire movie to to grieve and breathe. And it looks, for lack of a better description, fucking special. You can just tell the ones that have some magic about them. I, I, I think it's gonna break records, man, because I think it's gonna live in people's fucking hearts. Um, yeah. If that, that look, we all know, uh, you know, uh, trailers uh, can be misleading. I don't think there's any, I think that trailer plays a hundred percent fucking authentic. It is dripping with authenticity. So I think we're getting not a false bill of goods, but whatever the fucking opposite of that is. If you feel when you watch that trailer, like as much as people do what my wife crying, I get emotional. Imagine what the fuck, how devastating the entire feature is going to be. Yeah. Emotionally, I don't yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how one prepares for that. Other than we're going to be in that place in about six months, five months, because it's just November. Like it is not a long time to wait. For like four months, we're going to be there. Yeah, um, four months. What? Uh, let's speculate. Can we nerd out for a little bit? Sure. Um, and then we'll bring on our guest. Then we will, I know, but I don't want to nerd out with the guest because I don't want the guest to get in trouble. I thought about this. Yes, he needs to be prepared and, and, and insulated from our nonsense. But yes, if, 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 absolutely. We'll talk about craft with the guest. We're not going to sit there and be like, ooh, who do you think that is? <laughs> we don't want this guest to lose his job. Um, all right, so here's my uh, big question. Uh, who's wearing the suit at the end? I mean, there, there, there are but so many contenders, right? So many possibilities. Um, Mbaku is a possibility, Winston Duke, and we see him in the trailer. Um, you see him Shuri, going that fucking Namor, man, like a fucking sky yeah. attack at Namor. Launches himself at, at, at I saw him at, backstage, uh, Winston Duke, and I know him a little bit, but once again, I was like, I'm not gonna like the last thing anybody needs when they're like, I'm going out in front of 6,000 people is like, hey, remember Silent Bob? <laughs> So I just I stayed I hung back and shit, but yeah, I, saw I, I saw him at the EW party because he's easy to see because he's actually six and a half feet tall. He's very tall. <laughs> he's a big man. Um, so it could be him, could be Shuri, which you know there was a ton of speculation that she would take on the mantle. That was when I saw the trailer. I immediately turned to Harley and I was like, "That's that's Shuri in the suit." And then it wasn't until you know I watched it a couple more times, and then people online were like, "I don't know if that's." Sure. Like suddenly it occurred to me that I don't fucking know. Like in the comics, she became Black Panther at one point. But yeah, who, who knows what they're going to do now? There are shots in that trailer which lead me to believe it's Shuri. But that's what trailers do. They misdirect and they put things together in a different way so that when you see the final product, you're surprised by things. So it could be that it ain't Shuri. Shuri, yeah. what do you think? I mean, it, it, it could also be Riri Williams. Like, this could be a temporary thing. This could be a, this is the suit that she builds using what was lying around, using the material she had in a Wakandan lab. Um, it could be the proto Ironheart suit, potentially. You know, we only saw but so much of this thing. Now, there's um, also a, a faction online, which I think is fanciful. Because I think we would have heard something by now, but hey, man, I'm up for it and shit. Someone will like, uh, they're going to bring back Killmonger. And I was like, if they are, I don't think it's in this movie because how would we not have heard about Michael B. Jordan returning 
this soon, unless it was one of the best kept secrets of all time. Um, I mean, you know, they'd be you, good at it. Like when Marvel, when Marvel wants to keep a secret, they can keep a secret. And so, I mean, Michael B was in Atlanta making Creed three. They're shooting this in Atlanta. Like it's, it, it, it wouldn't be the craziest idea to imagine that for a scene or two, like you're not getting, it's not a Killmonger movie, but if you wanted to pretend that like, well, we never saw him die. If if they go to uh, what is the not the green belt, but the where he went the and ancestral talked, plane, the ancestral plane. If 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 let's say Shuri is you know has to finds a version of the flower or makes it because she's genius and ingests and goes to the ancestral plane, there's a good chance just like. Killmonger saw his dad that we might see Killmonger there. I think it's a heady, steady bet that we, if we see Michael B. Jordan, that he would be there. I, I don't know that he puts on the suit. I don't, that never occurred to me, but I'm not an imaginative man. I made <laughs> three, Mark. So that's proof that I'm, you know, my imagination is small. I, yeah. I, I'm not the, al alone here. I know that a lot of people online feel the same way, but my, New guess. Yes. Trailer opens not with Shuri. Who's it open with? Nakia. Nakia. Maybe, I mean, in a world of symmetry, you open with a character and you close a character. You see their arc. Now, we don't know a lot about the movie, so we can't, you know, uh, know that that's the case, but that was, you know, I was like, oh, maybe that's why we start with Nakia so that they can end with Nakia. And she was a warrior, remember? Like fucking. Mm -hmm. Well, she was a spy. Spy, but and like she, 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 can know, fuck she, very, she, she can fuck a dude up. Um, and there's also another candidate that that even though the Black Panther is often the head of state. It's not usually, it's not always that thing. But there's no reason that can't be Angela Bassett in that I, The there's other no fucking reason. thing I thought, man, especially when she they give her that moment in the trailer where she's talking about like, you know, I've given my whole family because you're like, well, wait a second. Where's Shuri? You know, and then I was like, what if it's her, man? That'd be fucking dope. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be amazing. I mean, that's because weird. She's still got those guns. The first trailer, like they got, it's such a wealthy proposition they got here that the first trailer, they could just go completely emotional. But the next trailer, they could start playing the shell game of like, who is it? Who's behind the mm -hmm. mask? Like they got a mystery that they could be selling us in addition to War with Namor, which is like a movie I'd watch in and of itself. <laughs> Movie's fucking packed. This kid is fucking gifted. And I saw him backstage too. Mm -hmm. um and he was uh very this there seemed to be a spiritual moment with him and his group as well like same with james and the and the guardians they're they're, they're close these cats and you know, those yeah. cats are super close and, and they talked about on stage going through the process of making this with that i think uh uh Letitia said like without big bro or something like that it, it was kind of emotional big brother um yeah. you could tell they've all been through something and did something special you know uh, in in the absence of their their fallen comrade magical fucking trailer who do you think yeah. is who do you think's wearing the suit uh i'm 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 going to i'm going to not vote for who's wearing the suit I, I would love it. I mean, of the of the candidates that we spoke of, I mean, Angela Bassett would just like would just blow the fucking doors off. Could you imagine the, the rage with which she could fight too? All that loss oh. and shit. Ah, oh, Queen Black Panther, hell yeah. Um, well, there's they're, they're here. Somebody asked me in the chat. They're like, "What are the breakdown video you watch?" Uh, the new rock stars if I may plug somebody else, did a breakdown of the trailer and they showed as he's going into, like in the beginning when they're all white, it's like a funeral procession, they're holding mm -hmm. his helmet. 
as they're heading toward what in the new rock stars they conjecture might be the green belt because it was beyond that like what looked like a tomb and is all green inside or whatever fuck but clearly that's where they're going to to bury him or what's left of him or something or memorialize t'challa on one side there's the first the the guy who was the first black panther who took the herb mm -hmm. first the flower and shit and Shinga. what is it the shinga i believe is his name and bast is at his feet mm. and on the other side they have um like a woman and i guess there's bast and there's another lion slash feline cat mm. god which they mention in civil war when t'challa is talking about my people believe that when you die you go to and he references mm -hmm. bast and i forget the other god's name mm. so in that video from the new rock stars they were suggesting that see the woman there and see how there's also a cat at her sekmet somebody in in a chat mm. sekmet um they're saying there's a woman and there's sekmet at her feet and when if you look at the woman she's dressed very much like angela bassett i'm not saying that's mm. angela bassett but there's <laughs> already setting up the notion of like there's a female version of this, like right there right. to, if the new rock stars are to be believed. And I think they do some pretty good deep dive video work, man. A guy, Eric Voss, very entertaining. Plug, plug for the new rock stars. <laughs> Don't click over yet. Wait till we're done and then go fucking watch their video. Yeah, because I do, I do want to know, you know, what, it, what it's like as, as, you know, when you get handed what has to be, you know, 200 minutes of unfinished film, and you're like, okay, now you got to go and make a trailer out of this. You got, you got to, you got to pick and choose and decide. You know, I'm sure in consultation with filmmakers and whatever. But how how are we going to to put our first foot forward? How are we going to entice a world? How are we going to enthrall an audience with uh, with a first look at Wakanda Forever? Um, let me tell you this: cutting a trailer. You could be the greatest filmmaker in the world, man. You can't cut your own trailer. Some have tried. I'm not saying it's impossible, but cutting trailers is an absolute art form unto itself. It's filmmaking. Um, just like when you're a filmmaker, you know, you got cameras and film and sound equipment and stuff and actors to help you. Those are the resources that help you make the film. Uh, of an editor of a trailer, trailer editor is a filmmaker as well. And they have resources just like us. It's just their resources are a little more finished and stuff. But it doesn't mean that the job's easier. Encapsulating what, like, look in the case of uh, Wakanda Forever, what seems like literally got to be over two and a half hour epic movie with a lot of moving parts and storylines. And you could have gone any number of ways and the path they chose, the tone that they picked, like has connected insanely well. Everyone's talking about the use of, of No Woman, No Cry and the, and the uh, Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar song. Mm -hmm. So who does that? Who are the magicians behind that? And are they paid as well as they should be? I consider myself an editor, but I, you know, I just, it's easy to edit a Kevin Smith movie because you just shoot what you need and then cut that together. Like it's difficult to be a real editor and it's even more difficult to cut trailers. That is a, a, an art form and it's a, it takes a fucking gift. And we say all that because uh, we got a guest, ladies and gentlemen. I was hanging out on Twitter before we uh, went a few hours ago and I saw a tweet uh, that was put up uh, by the editor of the Wakanda Forever trailer he said like, hey man, I, I cut the Black Panther trailer and so I was honored to cut this trailer too. And, you know, I love, love that people are groving on it, whatever, paraphrasing. Um, I, you know, I'm a fan of good work, kids. If you're exceptional at your job, like I, I don't give a shit if you're famous or not, I'm gonna blow you up, I see an opportunity. And so I hit him up to just be like, this fucking trailer is a, work of art like i forget what i tweeted exactly but it's very complimentary and then he responded and i saw my moment and i was like oh shit we're about to do a show and we're just gonna blow this trailer anyway why don't you come on 
and chit chat about it. And mercifully, he said, yeah, now we're not going to go into the like, hey, man, spoil Marvel movies because we don't want the man to lose his fucking job, kids. So obviously, <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. We'll talk about the past and we'll talk about this present, this trailer. But mostly we're going to talk about what it takes to make a two minute magic spell that makes a motherfucker want to live. I saw that trailer and I was like, that gives me fucking a reason to live till November. Um, <laughs> welcome uh, to the show, everybody. Andrew, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Hagley. <laughs> Hagley. I was going to say it, but I didn't want to fucking fuck it up. Welcome, welcome, Andrew Hagley, everybody. Thank you so much, man. Now, Andrew, do you work for Marvel or Trailer Cutting Company? Uh, currently, I work uh, for Disney. Disney. For Disney. Disney, shit. All right, that's right. So, Disney, Marvel owned by Disney. So, are you an, I mean, clearly you're a world class editor, but do you mostly cut trailers? Do you cut features? Do you cut TV shows? What else you cut? Um, I just cut trailers for the past maybe nine years. I'm just a trailer guy. What an art form, man. Look, trailers are my some of my favorite 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 movies at the end of the day you can count on a fucking trailer it always delivers the movie not so much case in point go look at any kevin smith trailer so much promise and then you see the movie so much promise wasted so in many ways like trailers are far uh more engaging far far they deliver far more joy than the movie ever does a trailer cannot let you down it only builds your anticipation and hope man so you got that golden fucking job of putting together media that everybody fucking loves, man. You ain't got to deal with the blowout later on when people are like, what the fuck happened? The trailer was amazing. The movie's dog shit. You're like, not my problem, bro. This trailer <laughs> is uh, fucking dazzling. If they were paying people for quality of work, somebody should be marching you into an office right now and giving you a hefty raise. That trailer is a trailer. I'm recording you saying that and I'm going to take it. <laughs> Play it for him. <laughs> Again, everyone listens to Kevin Smith. And I'm like, um, I don't know who that is. Um, but I'm telling you, man, the whole world was waiting for this trailer. And you did not let the whole world down. Like, that's a lot of fucking pressure. Think about the amount of expectation of people like, I can't wait to see my first look at Wakanda forever. Not only did you stick the landing, you fucking soared, man. It's a beautiful piece of work. How does one go about starting like you got um, the movie, what is there? Do you get, is there any guidance? Are they like, you could do this, you could do this, don't do this. These are the songs to use. Tell us. You know, that that's a really great question. It's completely different for every project you go to. Like I started off with um, more of a art house, indie house trailer park company. Uh, it's called Mark Lone Associates. And a lot what of the you projects- what you, Give us an example of what you cut back in the day. Oh, back in the day, um, Triple Nine, the Red Band trailer, uh, Dope, uh, Kicks, a lot of smaller stuff, you know, not, I, I didn't like, you know, really get into a lot of big stuff until Disney, uh, which I got into maybe five years ago. Black Panther was like the big thing that kind of mm. got me in the door. And then after that, I did like Star Wars trailers and like four or five Marvel trailers now. So it, it's been, it's been like for me the past couple of years, Star Wars and Marvel have kind of been my thing. Uh, which so I say bad things to have. Does yeah. that, yeah, my God, if you're going to play with the toys, what great toys. Does that mean the movies and the Disney Plus shows as well? Yeah, yeah. So the thing I cut before this was uh, Andor, the teaser for Andor. Um, okay. Uh, and I cut, uh, with my buddy Jason, uh, uh, we cut the first Mandalorian trailer, Whoa. which didn't show Baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. You gotta, yeah. What? what They're like, do not, do not play with those dailies. Look away. <laughs> yeah. What is the? Uh, what about? Let, let's take uh, Black Panther for example. How do we get yeah. to No Woman No Cry? Um, you know, uh, we got to that because Ryan dropped it on our lap. Like it literally it was Ryan and Ludwig. Uh, I, I don't know how much I can say about this, but uh, I locked a completely different trailer before uh, and we were all happy with it. And I was really excited about it because the first film meant so much to me personally. Like I met my wife working on that movie and now we have a baby. And, and uh, it just meant that first film was just like everything to me. You know, like went to Tech Check at Comic-Con, met Ryan. It was, it was fucking great. Yeah. And then, uh, so to land this trailer for, you know, the sequel and with all the weight and everything with it meant a lot. And then we got a call saying uh, Ryan did a song with Thames and it's amazing. And we got to rethink everything. And 
then that became this teaser and it came together extremely quickly uh, uh our team uh just a handful of really dedicated people with a lot of love and a lot of passion for this movie yeah what is do the you have a go ahead mark go I was just going to ask, like, do you have a first conversation with Ryan even before you guys are started? Like, what's the first thing that happens? Do you just get footage and you go and you start making like... Bad yeah, bad right. Things? Right now, it, it's kind of like that. Like, I have my own uh, producers for this. It was Maxine Park uh, and our creative director, Josh Dunn, for my department, The Hive at Disney. And mm -hmm. we get in dailies uh, and I kind of just like look through them and... A lot of times with these movies, you know, before we're even assigned them, I just like start digging and I'm because I'm a fan. I'm like everybody, you know, like I'm, I want to know what's next. I want to I want to start being inspired by it all, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, for this one, it was just seeing the imagery, seeing uh, everything that basically things that respond, you know, that people respond to in the teaser, things that we respond to, things that it begins and ends with Ryan and uh yeah, man, that, that's, you just kind of start dwelling and uh, going into it. And uh, I kind of collected maybe 40 minutes of just visuals that I loved. And I, you know, I, I tend to finish more teasers than trailers because I'm all about the atmosphere and the mood. Uh, mm. I, I'm pretty bad, actually, when it comes to finishing the final trailer. No. It's all story heavy and I'm, I'm not that, like, I'm all about the mood. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. Uh, we just kind of dug in with a lot of stuff. And then once that song, once we got that song and I threw it to uh, my man, uh, David James Rossum and Totem, he does trailer music. And mm -hmm. he put in Kendrick and we just said, hey, let's repeat this and put it on top there. And it, like, it just kind of cut together like butter. And I feel bad taking any flowers for this shit because it just feels very serendipitously like put together. And again, it just begins and ends with Ryan and then Ludwig and then my composer. And yeah, I'm kind of just along for the ride. What uh, now? So the way I understand it, you're thinking about the trailer the moment there's footage for the movie. I'm thinking about it before, usually. I mean, especially like Marvel movies, you know, we we know the characters, we know, you know, stuff that's happening. I read all the shit that you guys read. I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, really. And luckily, I have a lot of access to stuff. So. I, I, sometimes you get ideas. You, I, I, there's this term I like to use called, uh, build a house around a kitchen sink. And it's like, sometimes there's a line or just a glare or a glance or some little fucking moment that I'm just like, oh, and that's what the, the entire trailer, the entire piece has to build around that moment. Cause that thing spoke to me somewhere, you know? Uh, and sometimes you get that a year before, like you see anything, you know, most of these trailers for Marvel, put together pretty early um or at least versions of them you know mm. and uh yeah, yeah yeah so it's yeah. not like in my world the trailer is i wouldn't say an afterthought but nobody starts working on it until the movie is done and it sounds like there they're like working on a trailer simultaneously while they're making the movie even before the movie begins they're thinking about how they're going to present it to the world man i love what you said about the kitchen sink that is absolutely fucking brilliant Right on. Yeah, man. I, I like, to, I like to think of uh, uh, trailers as the, especially teaser trailers, which are more mood building. The, if you watched a movie and then you fell asleep and you had a dream about it, the trailer is the dream you had. And uh, I feel like that captures like, and again, it all starts with, in this particular case, it starts with Ryan and then Ludwig figuring out that song, No Woman to Cry. I, I think, uh, you know, the movie's not done, but it's, it's in, uh, it's, gonna be fucking great <laughs> i can't say <laughs> shit, but you know you um so in the do you you don't do you, you you mentioned seeing dailies so you don't have to wait until they're like here you go watch it you're seeing it as it comes together does that take you as far back to even the script like would you circle sometimes shit? sometimes <laughs> yeah sometimes we we get the script um again like when i was back at uh mark woolen and associates like i'm mostly just getting the final feature you know like if we worked on uh, a, you know, a small indie or uh, an art house film, something lower than 50 grand, uh, 50 million, you know, probably just the final feature. And, uh, uh, but, you know, working at Disney in house, there are a lot of privileges that come with that where you can be more involved creatively with uh, the marketing team who are like the best in the business. Like I just, 
I don't want to go anywhere. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, do you have heroes in the trailer cutting world? Are there rocks? Holy stars? shit. Do I have heroes in the trailer cutting world? Yeah, man. Uh, well, I, it started, it started off with Mark Mullen, who, who's an uh, unbelievable, phenomenal uh, editor. He was really like a uh, big inspiration for me. Uh, a good friend of mine, J.D. Finari, who has got some of the most incredible pieces. Uh, he helped me get into the business and I, I adore everything he does. Uh, then there, I, I'm kind of part of the crew that uh, there are a bunch of different ways to get into the trailer editing business. Uh, it used to be you become an AE, you do a lot of grunt work, and then you work your way to prove yourself to become a junior editor and apprentice, you know, like that. Um, and then there, kind of like 10 years ago, it was... Hey, if you cut a lot of fan stuff and put it on YouTube and you got a rhythm, like you can get a shot. And I was kind of part of that crew, uh, which is really helpful. And uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people in that crew that I admire greatly, greatly. Joe Walden, Jen Ip, there's a whole lot, of, a whole crew that is just And these incredible. are like, these are gifted artisans who's like, they don't get the sexy of like uh, a credit on a trailer. They should. Remember how like in the beginning, MTV, they didn't give directors credit and shit. And then, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, 10, 20 years in, they were like, maybe we should credit the directors of these things. Every trailer should be the, like a signature at the end of it from who cut it. Because I'm telling you, man, it's like, it's a gift. And the people that do it are an elite force that know how to go into a movie. And in the case of like Black Panther, clearly Ryan has the goods. But like, I'm sure over the course of your career, you've had to make trailers for movies where you're like, oh my God, where you were actually able to create something that wasn't necessarily there, like going with mood or feeling. Um, is that true? No, it's totally not true. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you're, you're right, you're right. But like, I, honestly, like, you, 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 I, I get into this thing where like, I've never disliked a movie I've cut. Is that it's right? Not, it's not because I've been lucky and only cut, you know, like cut your percents on Rotten Tomatoes. I just like you, 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 it's like an absolute honor and privilege to be able to work on somebody's movie. You know, a lot of the times it's like everybody's pouring in their life to it, you know, like just think about what you did with clerks. If you had to hand that off and, and give it to somebody and say, okay, you're responsible for introducing this thing that means so much to me and is the story of my life. And you're responsible for asking an audience to come in to, to get people in i know who cut that trailer is a guy named matthew cohen dude no yeah. way yeah that, he cut the trailer for clerks and he also cut the trailer for chasing amy which was an amazing trailer as well so i remember like that was early in my career obviously and the notion of somebody cutting a trailer like i was like that's my favorite part of fucking movies man like how does one do it and he cut a wonderful fucking trailer man yeah. like it's, I'm telling you, I've always had nothing but respect for trailer um, editors. It, it's such I, a- I don't think a lot of trailer editors can hate the movies they work on. I mean, some, there are some I'm sure that like can turn it off and turn it on, but like, you just gotta have to try to inject into what, if not what they achieved, then what they were trying to achieve and just ride that wave with them as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. Andrew, you got a beautiful soul. Behind you, you got a bunch of hardcore media there, physical media. What's that all about? Physical media. I did. It's like over, it's back here, it's over here, it's over there. And so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, my wife is like, it stays in this room, it doesn't go anywhere else, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm all about the physical media. And I have a TV that I, I every time I cut on something, I like uh, put on inspiration, you know, in the background to kind of, yeah. So. What is, uh, and I know it's hard to, to pick favorites, but what is your favorite trailer that you didn't cut? Oh man, uh, my absolute favorite trailer is uh, Little Children, the first trailer for Little Children. Yes, the great yes. trailer. You cut that trailer? Well, no, I did not cut that trailer. No, 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 no I'm didn't sorry. Cut. I, I don't I want to know what, what he didn't cut. It's your uh, favorite trailer. Oh my God. That is a great I'm, fucking trailer. A dude, I love uh, that trailer so much. I'm, yeah. I'm totally blanking on on the man who cut that. I mean, he worked for Mark Wollen too. And he left like the day I joined. Um, he ended up running a Focus Features marketing department completely. Like he was, he was just such a master. Uh, and he also did Social Network, uh, that trailer, which is- It's a great fucking trailer. Piece of art, you know, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. just remember the, the, the sound of the coming train and the bells in the distance. Uh, as the as the gate would close for the it was just majesty. 
so good so good man yeah what is the where does one go with it andrew like you mentioned some cat who cut a trailer who then went over to run focus is that what happens to most trailer cutters do they like become heads of marketing departments um a lot of them do uh my uh Boss and, and a guy who's very responsible for this this piece, he, he shepherded us through it. It'd be Ibsen. He was a trailer editor. He did The Dark Knight, uh, like the one that everybody remembers, like the first one that really showed the Joker. Yeah. And he, Imagine. you know, like he did that and then it was like golden ticket, you know, but he he's worked his ass off. I mean, now he's like this amazing uh, EVP at Disney. Um, will he still, so will a guy like that still like fucking roll up the sleeves and cut or is he like, I left cutting behind? I think he's too busy, but I, I, I don't know, man. I, I bet Ryan was Coogler's probably like, why don't you just do it? You know, because <laughs> <laughs> he's the one talking to him all the time, you know, where, but, uh, where, where do, where do you want to go with it eventually? Like, do you, are you happy exactly where you are? You're like, but I, what I really want to do is no, man. I, I, I think I have a theory that almost every trailer editor is a fail, failed filmmaker to some degree. <laughs> Not like, failed, I, bro. Not failed. A superior fucking filmmaker. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been cutting trailers since high school for like our little news uh, broadcast and stuff. Like I, I was the president of a film club, so would cut trailers for that. And my, I remember my teachers were like, this is a waste of time. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, me. And then I, 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 you know, went to film school, came to L.A. with dreams of being a filmmaker. And uh, uh, the thing I kept on really realizing was like the thing I was best at was cutting. So. Uh, just cut a bunch of fan stuff and then, you know, found found what, a home here. Yeah. What was the fan trailer that, that broke through for you? Oh, you know what it was? It was Looper. So the way I did it was I I uh, worked for this company, Movie Clips, which I don't know if you go online. Yeah, fucking mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah. Pull out the clips and then there's that music at the end. Right. <laughs> yeah, dude, that, that was like the first solid job I had. And, uh, and, uh, they had a little production company and they were like, we want to be the first place people go to get trailers and to get the trailer content of movies uh, on the YouTube space. And we need to figure out how to get people here. We don't, this was at a time where Apple's was getting all the exclusives, you know, on their site. So they uh, kind of said, well, if you make some fan trailers and just like, we'll post them as real ones. So let's just do it, you know? Uh, so I made a bunch of fan trailers that, and then I ended up putting them on my own website and, um, I got a job through it uh, because a buddy of mine, JD Fernario, I mentioned earlier, he uh, saw it and he was like, oh, what trailer house do you work for? And I'm like, <laughs> none, this is all fan stuff, you know? <laughs> uh, but the first one, the one that really got me was a fan trailer I cut for Looper, uh, which was split screen. And it was like, half of it was all Bruce Willis and half of it was all, um, you know, Gordon Joseph Levitt, uh, Go Joseph Gordon Levitt, yeah. And uh, it kind of played out and then they crossed and weaved in between each other and stuff. And that came out, like, I was just using footage from, like, official clips and, you know, the trailers that came out. And uh, I remember I worked on Last Jedi, and I told Ryan Johnson about that. I was like, you are responsible <laughs> for me having this career. Thank uh, you so much. Because that was the one that, like, the producers uh, called out and said, oh, we like this. Okay, we'll give you a shot. You know, it was really cool. If you that just joined great. us, uh, we're talking to Andrew. Uh, how do you say it again, Andrew? Hel uh, Hel Higley. Higley. Um, who cut, uh, amongst other things, he cut most recently the trailer for Wakanda Forever, the Black Panther sequel, which everybody fucking loves. He cut the first Black Panther trailer. Um, we're just talking about the art of trailer cutting, and it is an art form, kids. Uh, Andrew, what are, give me the five favorite trailers of yours you ever cut. Obviously, Black Panther is there. I would say, yeah, I would say uh, Wakanda Forever is probably my number one now, just because it, it just means so much. Personally, me, then Black Panther probably... I really, really, really liked Shang-Chi, the teaser for Shang-Chi. Uh, mm -hmm. I really liked Triple Nine, the Red Band trailer was a big deal. Uh, the Eternals teaser was a big deal for me, uh, just because I, I love Chloe Zhao and I, I love her vision. Did you uh, hear that song? Yeah, it, it's so funny. I Nobody will ever believe me that this is what happened, but it totally happened. I was like made a playlist of songs that I thought could match that movie while we were getting in dailies and, and stuff. And uh, um, don't you know, it's the end of the world, you know, that that song. I found it and I was like, oh, you know, that that sounds cool because and honestly, it came from a space of like nobody's done like a kind of 50s 
fun, quirky thing with Marvel before, and it just felt good. And then literally we get the first feature and it's in the movie. And I was like, this is, this is serendipitous. I like it. We have to use that, you know? And uh, yeah. So what, what a yeah. weird coincidence, man. I know. So I can't really take credit that I, I, I found it, but I, I swear to God, I did. <laughs> <laughs> when you you mentioned before like you build the you find, find the kitchen sink and build the house around it where is music in it for you is that the first thought or later on it, it is the beginning and end it is everything like i i i you don't have a cut without music uh uh i i certainly don't know if i could start a trailer without thinking of the impetus of a song and when you're a trailer editor it kind of ruins you for enjoying music because all you do when you hear anything it's like what could I use this for? You know, what could I use that for? Uh, Has there ever been a song that you were like, listen, this is perfect. It's the only one I can use. And then they can't clear it. And you're like, son of a bitch. All right, fine. Dude, that has happened so many times. You know, they're an artist doesn't want to. And, you know, like it sucks for when you're Disney, because before it's like we couldn't afford it. You know, like a lot of <laughs> when you try to throw uh, around songs and you can't afford it. But Disney can, if they believe in it, they'll throw money at it, you know, and hopefully, but sometimes artists just don't want to play, you know. In the audience, we got uh, Curtis Van Delight says, uh, teacher question, recommendation for top skills students should work on with editing? Yeah, yeah, you know, so um, one of the first things uh, uh, I, the first bits of advice I heard uh, when I entered the trailer world from a producer named Scott Mitsui. He said, uh, uh, a trailer editor needs two things. They need to know rhythm and they need to know story. Uh, you can learn story a lot better than you can learn rhythm. So they, it's, it's, it's tough to really teach rhythm. It's tough to throw seven shots at somebody and say, make it work together, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have a semblance of that, everything else you can pick up and learn, you know? Um, so that's really what they look for. I, I always say to anybody who's like trying to get in to the business, it, like cut as many fan things as you can cut for shitty movies, cut for movies that you like, that you, you thought didn't have uh, a good campaign and do something completely different. And don't really worry about telling the story because people are generally looking for the rhythm and the feel and that mood of how you can cut three disparate images together, you know? Like a great piece of advice right there from Andrew Hagley, kids. Cutter of the Wakanda Forever trailer, cutter extraordinaire works in the, over at Disney. Um, when you do you have uh, what's your source for music? Do you uh, uh, uh people I, or do you got a bunch of CDs that you burn and, and pull apart? Uh, dude, I, I work with um, some really amazing music supervisors. Uh, Evelyn Garcia is my current supervisor. I worked with uh, this guy Omar Herrera before. Uh, Brian, um, uh, uh, I, I just work with a bunch of really great people and they know music way better than I do. And they generally, I, I have my own playlist on Spotify. Sometimes that shit will get through. And when it does, I feel like a million bucks because I feel like I'm doing like, you know, <laughs> the, the big thing, which is finding the cue. Right. Uh, but most of the time they're pulling up playlists and, and doing all that stuff. And that is, that is the big thing. It's finding the cue, isn't it? Like at the end of the day, you've got two minutes to get into their head and heart. And there's no better way to do that than with music. Even yeah. with visuals on your side, it's like, you need that fucking song to build around. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. So what's uh, up next for you? What's the next trailer you're working on? If you can tell us. Uh, I can't tell you, I, unfortunately, but I, I'm like, I, I, no joke. I'm working on something now that like is the reason I joined this company. And like they, oh. the day I interviewed for this job, they announced that this movie was going to happen like five years ago. And uh, I was like, this is serendipitous. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta work on it. And uh, been working on it. And it's been like the greatest privilege of my life. It's great. And yeah, yeah. Can't say anything. I, I, I don't want you to get in trouble. The, um, that Fango shirt, man, it's fucking top notch. Right on. What's my old alma mater. I worked at Fango when I was a wee young lad. No way, really? I did my first job out of college. I was a I was an assistant editor for Starlog, and then along with that came being an assistant editor for Fangoria and Comic Scene. So yeah, I I, I bleed that blood as well. Right on, man. It helped. I'll tell you another thing. The best thing if you want to be a trailer editor and you go and talk to people and you try to get your foot in the door, being a nerd and a geek about this shit is <laughs> like it's the best. It will help so much because. You need that passion, you know? Uh, yeah. 
Absolutely true. We um, I spent the weekend blowing up the Lionsgate folks who did our marketing campaign and cut like what I feel is a exquisite fucking trailer uh, for Clerks 3, where I'm like, I know the movie and I, I wouldn't even know where to begin trying to put it together. And they put together a trailer that like first pass I saw is basically the exact same pass that everyone else is seeing. One shot was swapped out for something else. Like, you know, and that was, we got a song by Lit in the movie, My Own Worst Enemy. And so they were like, oh, let's go with that as the central song. And in the movie it's used prominently, but not, it's not like an opening song or ending song. And the fact that they zeroed in on it, I thought was really interesting. And that's what pushed it through. Everyone was just like, I fucking love that song, man. Like it's such an earworm. Um, it, it is. I have nothing but respect for. That is a great trailer, by the way. It, it was so great. It did a nice job, right? Like yeah, I was, yeah, because so that song it, it brings you back. You know, it really puts you in that time and place, and and everything that Randy's probably gonna get. And you're right. It really does come down to feeling. All of that shit is about what you feel in that fucking two minutes. And the ultimately, the feeling they want you to have is like, I gotta see that and shit. But it, it's it's a complex fucking art form, man. It started, you know, as a, in the world of the commercial, but it truly is beyond artistic at this point. It's right. a gift that you got. Thanks, man. I want to, I want to, can I shout out one more thing? Please. Uh, when you, when Mark, when you asked the uh, favorite trailers, absolutely. Uh, uh, Little Children is a masterpiece. Social Network's a masterpiece. Uh, Steve Harris cut, uh, my friend Steve Harris cut this trailer for Kill Bill, the first one. He, he lied, granted, he lied, because it said in 2003 and with Thermo Kill Bill, yeah, that didn't happen. That didn't happen <laughs> right. But he did a little thing in that, which is the most inspired. It's the kitchen sink thing of right when it says Uma Thurman, she opens the trunk and you hear Quentin Tarantino just go, action, breaking the fourth wall. And it's just like the most brilliant marketing strategy. I, 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 I always think like, what could be the action for anything? And I never got anywhere close to that, but it's, <laughs> that see yeah. look at that that is deep cuts geeky man you could tell that's why you're good at your job you give a fuck about this shit man yeah, he loves it Thank and you. and it's like it, it's not like you're like yeah but what i really want to do is you're like i'm here this is what i want to <laughs> do man good for you I, I once again i don't know what disney's paying you but i vote you get paid more thank you i'm gonna do i'm I, again i'm gonna screen cap that <laughs> my boss say yeah. listen to kevin smith right I, uh, they're like we never do we're not going to begin it now <laughs> i uh as i tell many people uh that that i get to meet in, in life uh, who do things that i absolutely adore i heart your art my friend excellent <laughs> job i really appreciate that brother what's the dog's name indy oh indy, indy. You named, the dog indy. Yeah. named after my favorite movie character yeah good boy I think we just put together a mystery, kids. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> no, um, Andrew, hold on, so hold on, faster, faster, faster. Uh, yeah, yeah, you didn't, you didn't see anything. Andrew it was so nice that you we were uh, responded and, and jumped on. Uh, but more importantly, thank you for for what you do, You're doing the Lord's work, kid. Thank you so much. I, I uh, really appreciate it, guys. And uh, all the love, all the love of it goes to Ryan Coogler and that crew. It's like, holy shit. They are just the best. Absolutely. That's amazing. Everyone give Thank it up for Andrew Hagley, man. What a good guy. Andrew. Um, fuck. I could do that goddamn the whole show, man. That's like, that's just interesting shit. I know like people like to see like fucking famous people talk, but like, that's a rock star right there, man. Literally, like, how often do you get to hear from the person who did some? How many times you watched that trailer, you said? Like seven. Think of another artist whose shit you watch seven fucking times, bro. Yeah, in a day. In a day. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's, <laughs> that's an artist right there. And you, we both appreciate the fuck out of his art, as does the whole planet. The fucking thing has got zillions of views and shit. And in chat, people were talking about that fucking trailer is fantastic. Yeah, um, and, you know, he's very sweet of course he's absolutely right it, all credit goes back to Ryan and co for the material and stuff but um, man I'm telling you that's a, it's a gift to be able to do that shit hell yeah it's, it's what we used to call a tone poem it's yeah. like we're not, we're, not, we're not giving you a narrative we're just making you feel something 
We're giving you things that, that inspire emotions and not plot. It's really and, uh, what yeah. it was. And it's nice to hear too that he's one of the YouTube kids, man. He was just like, yeah. I cut shit just because I like cutting shit. That entire fucking first wave of YouTube kids, like, <laughs> who are just like, oh, this is fun. Like, they're all fucking rich and have good jobs now. They're all happy. They're all happy. Yeah. Which, I want to track down his looper trailer. I want to, I want to see the, uh, the, 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 the short film that made that, that broke Andrew Higgler big. Fucking crazy, man. Um, how wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So we did all the Marvel stuff. The Sandman trailer played, kid, and it's out there. You can see it. We obviously can't show trailers here because they fucking throw us offline for some reason. Yeah. But my God, the trailer was beautiful. I, I can't wait to watch that. That's happening, dropping three days after my birthday. So, All right. fuck so off next everyone. Friday. Right? Yeah. I'm going to be sitting the fuck. And that's Netflix puts it all up at once. None of this Hulu bullshit, right? <laughs> Uh, Netflix drops everything at once. They're not fucking with it. I cannot wait, man. I've loved Sandman since fucking first issue debuted. Can't wait. Uh, the trailer looks absolutely fucking phenomenal. Beautiful, sumptuous. Yeah. I also saw they dropped a couple of scenes yeah. in Sandman. They dropped. Uh, it's a lovely scene with uh, with death coming to claim somebody's life, and it's 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 you know Morpheus and 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 uh, and death showing up to this old violinist, this old guy who's just playing his violin and, and he stops playing and he's like, do you know who I am? And he's like, yeah, I'm not ready yet. It's like, oh, well, you know, you get as much time as anybody gets, you get a lifetime. You know, he says a quick prayer in, in, in Hebrew and then he stands up and get ready to go. And it's, it's this gorgeous, tiny little scene, but it's beautiful. And then they have another scene where it's Morpheus returning to hell to get his helmet back from the demon who stole it. And so you get some Gwendolyn Christie as Lucifer Morningstar. Um, and it's great. So I can't, I can't fucking wait. Next Friday. Oh my God, it looks fucking gorgeous. Friday, it begins, kids. The, uh, you get what everyone gets. You get a lifetime. That was the scene, uh, that moment. And see, now it's a scene in a show. But until recently, it was just a moment in a comic book that I was thinking about when I was laying on the fucking table during the massive heart attack one of the things that made me okay with the notion of like oh shit i may die in here tonight there's an 80 percent chance i'm gonna die in this room was that moment where he's just mm-hmm. like you know what do i get and she's like you got what everybody gets you got a life and i was like so did i all right man i get it gaming helped me fucking try to i, I was exiting this world i was ready to go because i thought of some beautiful shit neil gaiman wrote and then that son of a bitch and doctor mark saved my life <laughs> <laughs> but i'm glad he did because all them fucking phase five movies i'm here <laughs> oh my god um i uh what else i guess that's it that's it i mean the, the last the last bit of business for the show is uh is the passing of two greats one had way more to do in genre than the other but um paul sorvino oh my god yes i fucking just saw this man fuck yeah passed away and and you know, Mira Sorvino's dad Mira Sorvino's dad um and there 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 are a couple of things that of course everybody loves him for I mean he was always a very genial mobster um that seemed to be the the, the role that he that he seemed to play in Hollywood I just re-watched The Firm last night which he shows up at the end of and he's absolutely wonderful as well yeah I mean I I I, I think I first I first came to him in, in, in Goodfellas of course but then I I I was surprised to encounter him in lots of different places. Um, and the two that always struck me was William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, Baz Luhrmann's version of Romeo and Juliet, where he plays Juliet's dad, um, I think, or is it Romeo's dad? I think it's Juliet's dad. Um, and he's just big and operatic and he's just bellowing opera from his, from his, you know, from the top of his lungs. And then he played Worf's adopted brother on yeah. an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, I was like, is that fucking Paul Sorvino? Yeah, yeah, it is. Doing sci-fi and playing a, a, a Russian son of a, I mean, brother of a Klingon. Um, and then, you know, so just beloved by Hollywood, you know, never, never ever got the hosannas he probably should have gotten, um, given his body of work. Um, but, uh, but, but had a definite role to play and then was happy to veer from it. And just stretches stretches gifts a little bit. 
Um, and then the other person to pass away He's a, was a huge bucket of win, as we say on fucking Hollywood Babylon. Um, thank God we had Paul Servino. Yeah, um, you know, he, he I'm a, I was a, still remain a huge Law and Order kid. Not all of them, but Law and Order, the fucking flagship show. Like it means a lot to me. It played a big. We watched it when we had the kid, and so it's always wrapped up with that. The kid, you know, the show used to begin and boom, boom, ba, 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 ba. Didn't matter what the kid <laughs> was doing. She was like six months, eight months. No, I guess a year because she was doing this shit. She could sit up. She couldn't quite walk. Um, it, she'd be crawling, and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 and the kid would just. <laughs> nice. So he was a big, uh, he had a whole season where he was a character and shit. Mm. And his cop, his cop character, like, I think he got shot or, and then he got shy about the job and, and left and stuff. <laughs> uh, what a wonderful actor, a huge fucking loss, man. But thank God we had him at all. He gave us some great shit. Indeed. Um, and then the other actor who passed um, had a lot more to do in genre, but also just did a lot more in general. Um, more than almost anybody else, except for like James Hong. Um, David Warner. Um, oh my away. God. Fuck. Yeah. You know, if, if you haven't encountered David Warner, you have. You just didn't know that it was David Warner. But he, he was very good at playing bad guys and so did so quite a bit in, in movies like Time After Time, which Jack was the, the first Ripper. time I ever saw him. That was the first time I saw him too. He played Jack the Ripper. He played Jack the Ripper, uh, Time Bandits. Where he played, Tron, he played the ultimate evil in Time Band. The ultimate evil. And then the master control program in Sark in Tron. He was a heavy in Titanic. He was, I mean, God, he was in Sam Peckinpah's The Ballad of Cable Hogue. Ray Shaw Ghoul in Batman the Animated Series. Indeed. he's He's been in three separate iterations of Star Trek. He was in The Final Frontier as Chancellor Gorkon. He was in, in a Cardassian officer in Star Trek The Next Generation. I mean, he, Jesus, he's been, he's been in everything. He was in fucking The Man With Two Brains. He, he was in he, Tim he Burton's was in Omen. In The Omen, he got his head cut off. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's made some 228 different acting credits. And uh, the quote he gives is, when others say no, he once said, I say yes. Sometimes he got the part because he was the cheapest one available. <laughs> uh, um, I was very sad to see this news um not the least of which because i've been a lifelong fan quite like you um but uh we were trying to get him for masters yeah to do a voice and uh we were we just we, we had a kind of conversation about like what about oh my god david warner so um yeah it's when i read the news this morning i was like we just missed him man um, yeah. What a legend, an absolute legend, and what a fixture of my childhood. I remember going to see Time Bandits with my father um, and talking about it the whole ride home because I was a Catholic school kid. And I was like, well, their, their version of God and the devil was, you know, I don't know, it's not even close to ours. And my father looked at me like I was an idiot. Like, <laughs> Fucking movie's got Sean Connery in it. What are you? <laughs> I got an idiot as a fucking child. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. David Warner, huge part of pop culture, huge part of uh, everything I've watched and enjoyed over the years. Uh, he will be missed. Big bucket yeah. of water. What a goddamn. I feel like you're old. He was 82 years old. Nope. 80. 80. Okay. I was Passed really looking cancer. forward to like being able to tell him like, oh, my God, dude. Time after time. Oh my God, dude. Time bandits. Oh my God. Like mm -hmm. it's a shame. I mean, and if you were a kid like us who came of age in the in the 80s and the 90s, and you were like us watching movies on video because you went to the video store to rent shit. He was in French Lieutenant's Woman. He was in the Company of Wolves. He was in Waxwork. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. John Carpet is in the Mouth of Madness, Scream 2, and Mary Poppins Returns. In 2018. Oh my God, he was in the recent Mary Poppins movie. He was. He was in Twin Peaks. He was on Larry Sanders' show. Like this was just a dude who fucking worked. Yeah, man. He he put himself out there. Good for him because now he'll be with us forever. Indeed. He's gone, but certainly not forgotten. Uh, the David work persists. 
thank you, Legend, for the time you gave us and the work you did. You captured our imaginations. Indeed. Um, well, there it is. That's all the news we got for you. Sad That's news. That's all the news. But, uh, but you know, we, we had a lot of good news prior to that. We did. We talked oh, yeah. a lot about Marvel. Excellent fucking guest and Andrew Hagley. Um, fucking got to hear about one of my favorite subjects in the world, fucking trailers and how <laughs> they're made and shit. Uh, kids, thanks for hanging out. You all have a good time. Everybody enjoy themselves. Everybody learn a thing or two. We're glad you're here. Can't do it without you. Uh, thanks so much. Don't forget, I made a motion picture. We, sh we had a panel in Hall H and it was wonderful. A lot of very emotional, considering like fucking Clerks is a funny movie. Very emotional across the boards. Uh, you can watch the whole last panel after we're done here on my YouTube channel. It's 90 minutes. It's really good. Chase is very funny in it. Um, and uh, Clerks 3 is coming to a theater near you September 13th, September 15th on Fathom Event Screens. Or watch it with, with me when I'm on the road when I take the movie out for the convenience tour. Uh, tickets at clerks three dot movie right now. Uh, if you're in uh, North Carolina, I'm going to Galaxy Con this weekend. Tickets at csmod.com. And if you're in New Jersey on August 2nd, why I'm celebrating my birthday and Jason Muse's birthday. I'm 50, turning 52. He's turning, he's 48. Uh, so the event is called 100 Years of Jay and Silent Bob take pictures with us then watch our good old show at night and see the first five minutes of clerks three on a big screen in the movie theater oh it's gonna be good times kids we take it to, as always at csmod.com sir do you have anything you would like to plug um not especially um but if you if you'd like to get a copy of adora in the distance it's currently on sale at uh, at at whatever uh comic book store you would like to go buy it from or amazon or whatever but Go to a comic shop. Go in there. Pick it up. Pick some other stuff up. And kids, here's a little inside baseball. Uh, me and uh, Mark have been talking about uh, Mark coming out to the East Coast and doing a signing at Jane Silent Bob Secret <laughs> Stash. And if we were going to do that, naturally, we would do Hollywood Babylon while we're out there as well. Uh, back in the past, it would have been like, well, 50-seat Hollywood Babylon. Hold one thought, Batman. Yeah. Instead, Batman and Beyond. Now Batman we've Beyond. Got what did not, I say? Not Babylon. Fat Babylon. Babylon. Oh my God. Thank you, Batman. I was like, shut up. I'm on a roll. He's like, I need to correct it. Uh, Fat Man Beyond. Sorry. Um, so we will, uh, when Mark comes out, we're trying to figure out what that date will be because I start touring with Clerks 3 September 4th. Um, we'll be able to do it in like a 300 seater and shit like that. It'd be a big show. It'll be, it'll be great. So you'll be able to get your Dora signed and you'll be able to see Fat Man Beyond Live. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, baby. Oh, what mighty times there will be. Babylon is on my mind because uh, we have a Babylon show, August 5th. Tickets at csmod.com at Flapper <laughs> here in West Hollywood. Um, but there it is, kids. What a good time. Fuck, man. I can sit around talking yeah, about fun. Marvel trailers forever. And then talking to a guy who cuts Marvel trailers, it's even better. Fuck. Dreaming. Good uh, don't forget, kids, the Roosevelt's making Kevin Smith collaboration. Look at that shit. Look at, look, look at that. Look at those designs. Look at it. <laughs> look right. at my tits. Yes. Um, thank you for hanging out, my friends. Um, thank you for taking the time. What a fucking fun night it's been. Indeed. Uh, there it is, kids. Uh, if you like this show at all, fucking thank the other guy. Give it up for Marvelous Mark Bernard and everybody. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. And if you're feeling horny, give it up for me. No. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is Fat Man Beyond for this evening. I am Kevin Smith. And I am Mark Bernard. Tune in! Same fat time, same fat channels, podcast.com or youtube.com slash Kevin Smith. Jeff's kiss, everybody. Mwah. Wakanda forever. Oh, that too. That this is the cat. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the 
AKA Ask Kev Anything. Every saga has a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Sal Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Kissing you!